Hi guys, so today we are going to be doing a question from homework number two, and that question is going to be problem Q1. Now Q1 states that a guitar string has a length L and mass M, and that it is attached between two stops that are D distance apart. And we're going to note that D is less than L. Now A asks us to find an expression for the tension T that the string must be tightened to in order to produce a standing wave with a fundamental frequency of F1. In other words, we're going to find an expression for T in terms of the known quantities. So we know that length is equal to L, mass is equal to M, D is our distance, and F1 is our fundamental frequency. What we're still trying to find is that tension equation. So let's write down the equations that we know. We know that velocity is equal to the square root of tension divided by linear density. So if we write that another way, we'll find that tension is equal to velocity squared times linear density. We also know from class that d is equal to rate times time, which if written another way, we can say that wavelength is equal to velocity times the period. Now we don't have the period in this equation, so we're going to change this into wavelength is equal to velocity times frequency. Now to solve for this, we'll get that velocity is equal to wavelength 1 times frequency 1. Now we're almost done and we can almost plug back into this original equation because now we have our velocity, but we do need to find this wavelength, what this wavelength is equal to because we don't have wavelength yet. And we also need to remember that linear density is equal to mass over length. So in order to find this lambda, we're going to recall from class that lambda m is equal to 2d over m. So if we're looking for lambda 1, that's just going to be 2d over 1 or 2d. So using this equation, this equation for velocity, and this equation for density, we're going to plug right back into this equation for t and then solve for t in order to find an expression using those known values. So if we rewrite it again, it's going to be t is equal to velocity, which we discovered was lambda 1, frequency 1 squared, and then we're going to multiply that by the linear density, which is mass divided by length. Or, to write it again with this new um, expression for lambda, we're going to have 2d squared times frequency 1 squared mass over length. And this is still solving for t. So that's going to boil down to tension is equal to 4d squared f1 squared mass over length. And that's going to be your expression for t. Now b asks us to use dimensional analysis to show that the expression we derived above is correct. In other words, we need to check that the units on both sides of the equation are the same. So we know that the usual, we know that the units for tension are equal to n or newtons. So we need to prove that this equation from up here is equal to newtons as well. So if we rewrite this equation, we're going to get t equals 4d squared f1 squared m divided by l. And if we input the SI units for these um, terms, we're going to get d is equal to meters and the variable is squared, so we're going to put squared right there. We're also going to get frequency squared, which would be either hertz squared or 1 over second squared. And we're also going to get that mass is equal to kilograms. And lastly, length is still equal to meters. So if we just simplify this a little bit, we can cancel out this meters from the bottom and this squared from the top, leaving us with meters times 1 over second squared times kilograms. Or if we write it a slightly different way, we're going to see that kilograms times mass, I mean times meters, 
over second squared. And if we recall, this is this function is equal to Newton's. So Newton's is equal to Newton's. So we can check off that both sides of the equation are the same. And lastly, we're going to draw the third standing wave. And we're going to label all the nodes and antinodes on this wave. So we know that because this is a third standing wave, m is going to be equal to 3. And because it said in the beginning that this wave was stopped on both sides, it's going to have these two end caps on it. And then finally, what we're going to do is we're going to say that there are three, this, this wave needs to be divided into three parts. So we're going to have and or we're going to have nodes right here and then also on the ends because this is a stopped um, wave. And so all we're going to do is we're just going to draw this wave up and around and then note where it would go if it was just going the other way. And we're going to say that all these little dots right here are nodes. And that this portion right here and this portion right here, and this portion right here, those three are our anti-nodes. And that's it guys, thank you so much for watching.